I thought fishing would be a good idea on this big hike because I love fishing, so it sort of made sense. I think I've been hiking for longer, but they share a lot of things in common and I think that's why I'm drawn to both. I find that as soon as I'm out there, whether I'm on the water or on the trail, everything sort of just, just fades away and you really just get fully sucked into the moment and you're just focusing on one thing and it's, it's a meditation in a way. Uh, my name is Dominic Urbacker. I'm 19 and I'm... Hang on, I looked at the camera. Redo, run it back. <laughs> hey, I'll get better, I'll get better. So, you dropped him off at the start? Yeah. yeah. But how was that? Where did you drop him? That was uh, Walhalla. I dropped him off at 7 in the morning. It was, it was wet, it was misty, it was cold. And I think it stayed like that. Maybe three quarter of his, quarters of his trip has been <clears throat> bad weather. Oh yes, it was talk of the family, talk of extended family, like so many people, aunties and uncles and everyone was, um, were all following, cousins, everyone was following his journey and they were, have you heard from him Michelle? Oh, and, and they knew stuff if I hadn't seen the story before I had, so um, yeah we were all talking about it all the time. So the Australian Alps walking track is Australia's oldest long distance hiking trail, starting in the historic town of Walhalla in Victoria and finishing in Thawa on the outskirts of Canberra, traversing 680 kilometres of Australia's alpine regions through the ACT, New South Wales and Victoria. Heading down to Victoria today. Are you excited for me, Mum? Absolutely. I think the dogs are excited for you too. I don't know. I wonder if my car will be clean when I get back. Is that the wishful thing? <laughs> I wonder uh, if I'll be picking you up clean. There are a few things that got me interested in the AAWT. Uh, it was something that sort of compounded over, over a few years, um, especially working at Tom's and having a lot of people talking about different trails and things got me interested. There was Bo Miles' video on the Alps track. Uh, I thought that was awesome and I, you know, that's when I decided I'm, I'm going to do that track one day. So I had to get the guidebook and start researching the track. It was so daunting because there's so many names of places and there were so many things that I had to um, research and, and, and figure out. It took me a while to get my head around it. Um, first of all, being my gear, I did a lot of research online and, and um, spoke to a lot of people and sort of walked through Woolies and just grabbed out whatever looked good. I wasn't that, that prepared in terms of calories per day and things like that. Um, and when that was all ready, I just divided it all up and, and planned my food drops. So the night before I left Walhalla and, and started the track, I was extremely nervous. I was very, you know, kind of scared of what, what was to come. Um, but in saying that, there was, there was a bit of relief because I was almost to the point where there was, there was no going back. I was still doing last minute things like downloading the routes onto my GPS and, and, and changing things, uh, even, you know, the 24 hours leading up to the start. So. I was very stressed. I stayed up to about one o'clock getting the last of my routes in uh, before we'd leave in the morning. Just left uh, Walhalla, coming up the mountain here. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I'm only like five meters from town. I did expect this to be <laughs> clear. <laughs> so, and this is, you know, I'm assuming a, a good part of the 700k. So, yeah, I'm excited to see you know, what comes from it. It was almost this relief, just I had no more planning to do. I was on the track, there was, you know, no starting again. And I was, I was excited as much as I was nervous to get cracking and, and see what the track had in store for me. Only a couple hours in. Um, and it looks like I've got a few friends. <laughs> Bloody hell. Freaking gross. I think I got them all. 
Man. I've only been walking for two hours, hey, like. Oh, I have to check every couple of hours or something, I think, but. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, my training schedule for the Australian Alps walking track was very much last minute. Other than a few overnight hikes, I uh, walked home from work a couple days. Uh, I live about 20 k's from work, and if I walk from, from the shop through town and then over the hill, uh, through the bush, then I get to my house, and that was a good way to get some extra k's in. Um, and I kind of like the idea of walking to work, um, not not through the streets, you know, just through the bush. I thought that was quite cool. Just sort of getting to the top of the longest bloody hill I've ever walked up, I reckon. Just, I didn't think I was gonna end. <laughs> just going and going and going. If it looks like this, I'm happy. So I made it to the top of Mount Erica. Um, bloody long climb. But I also love how much the scenery's changed. Like, I'm gonna flip this around. This is so different to what I was walking through a few hours ago with leeches and, and massive ferns and vines and things. Made it to camp. So it ended up being 36 k's instead of 32. My feet were literally wet the whole 36 k's, you know, after about one minute. It's a, bit, it's a bit messy at the moment. I'll clean it up. I'm just, you know, I just got here and I'm, I'll probably have a nap. <laughs> Honestly, I only got five hours sleep last night. When I was planning for the track, I decided to, to try to do it in, in 23 days as opposed to the standard five to six weeks. And that came down to a few things. One was because it's pretty hard to get six weeks off of your life of, from work and, and commitments and things where you can just disappear uh, into the bush. So that was one of the factors. And the other thing that really solidified that was I was really looking for a challenge as opposed to you know a relaxing walk through the through the bush or a vacation if you will I wanted something that would really push me and shortening my itinerary to, to 23 days I think set the bar pretty high um, from the get-go I didn't even know if I could do it but uh, I knew that I'd give it a good go I don't know how to record this with the flash not in my face but anyway it's currently 5 15 a.m. I might make a coffee and pack up my stuff and then uh, have brekkie on the trail, but we'll see. I like how one minute I'm walking through a nice track and all of a sudden it becomes a road and then it turns into this. That doesn't appear to be a trail at all. <laughs> you can only see where you're going, but you can sort of figure it out. Just made it to Thompson River campsite. You can see my setup over there. Pretty happy to be here. Today was another big day, but uh, the Thompson River's just over to the right. Apparently there's fish in there. Yeah, initially I was sort of thinking about taking my rod and then as my whole ultralight mindset came to be, it just didn't really make sense. And with all the bush bashing and things I'd have to do, I really, really didn't want to have to deal with a broken rod. So these are my rod options. This one needs a bit of work. It's got a bit of bark in the end, but it's definitely got a bit of flex is nice put some tippet on there and a few flies and see what we can do I, I kind of thought the idea of fishing on a stick was pretty funny but uh, and i didn't know if it, if, if it would even work i had chat to uh the one and only mickey finn and i said hey mickey you reckon i can catch a fish on a stick on my hike and he said hell yeah dude and uh he told me about how he'd rig it and like after that i was like right i'm catching a fish on a stick on this hike and the rest is history. What I'm working with, um, a bit of paracord tied to a stick with a hopper and a little flashback nymph. As I've just had one trout have a go at my fly there. Man, I don't know if he'll go for it a third time. That was just a rock that time, but it's just hard to get the strike right when you got a stick for a rod, you know? Go on. Yep. Yeah. Oh no! Did you see that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no way! That's a decent brownie! Oh my god! On the stick! <laughs> fish on a stick! Catching a fish on day two it was like, man, if I can catch a fish on a stick, maybe I can, I can hike this whole track and, and get through it. 
just heading down here towards Black River, but I'm pretty keen to get to Rump Saddle and get to my food drop. Um, just hopefully I don't fall over coming down here. <laughs> it's pretty bloody steep. Blackberries and ferns and probably heap of leeches. You see now, I've completely lost the track. The guidebook did sort of point out that this part sort of disappears, but try and make whatever what I can. <laughs> It'll link back up soon, I'm sure. Oh, thank God for that. Let's see how we go. Massive climb. Oh, let's do it. See, like, this is the track, and I'm on it. I know I'm on it, but, like, <laughs> look at it. <laughs> what? What are you supposed to do with this? That's brutal. I sleep good tonight. Oh man. They're not very excited to see me, but I'm excited to see the road. Track undefined in sections. Yeah, you reckon? Um, onwards to a lookout and then to my food drop and then I'll be at camp. Might be one of the best days of my life. Not the day, the day sucked but getting here. So Alex stashed my food drop for me. Um, she's a trail angel and she's put this there. Oh, and that's, that just made my day. I just laid down out of nap. It pretty much knocked me out. Like when you're dehydrated and you've been walking all day, it doesn't take much. I should just stash food around my house, I think. Stash it at work, stash it in my car. Mm. How good. I think I came down into Black River too quickly yesterday. My left knee, the joint hurts. It's not a muscle problem, it's the joint. I just have to be careful with that today because that could be a showstopper if I don't look after it. Hey, there we go. Been looking for him for a while. That's good. I know I'm doing something right. And I'm onwards into the abyss. Up and over and under. And, up and over and under. Not this time again. Oh, how good is that? Oh, that's everything I've walked over over the last few days. And the best is around the corner, I do believe, so. Oh, man. Um, so because I spent so much time out there on my own, you, you obviously have to be pretty comfortable with yourself. So I thought by doing it solo, that would help me sort of get over a few of those, those insecurities. And I think that's a challenge for a lot of people, spending so much time in your own head and, and out there on your own, you've, you've only got yourself to rely on. There was a time when I went four days without seeing a car or a person or anything like that in the, in the remote part of the track down in Victoria. There became a point, especially after a couple of weeks, where I just re really trusted in, in my abilities and didn't feel like I needed anyone to rely on. I, I really noticed when I did run into other hikers, I cherished the company and, and having someone to talk to. But it was only once I, I ran into other people that I realised how long I'd been, been alone for. I just hope can't soon, because I'm getting a little bit delirious and I don't have heaps of water. I'm hoping there's water down the road from the campsite. I'll have to walk a couple k's down the creek. Um, check the first spot dry and this spot dry too. I've checked up in the gully and also down um, and it's dry. It really pissed me off. There's a big puddle on the road right next to the campsite that looks pretty bad. Full of mozzies and it's like a oily brown blackish colour. Um, but that's gonna have to do. I'll filter it and then I'll boil it. <sighs> Got no other choice. I was an idiot. I shouldn't have. I should have carried water from all the way down at Low Saddle, but I. That's stupid of me. Currently on day six. Um, heading to a Vallejo Gantner hut. Uh, morale's quite low because of the shit water I've been drinking filled with mosquitoes, it tastes like ant, dead ants and dirt and I've got it mixed up here with some barocca. 
but at least I've got this gorgeous view. The sun's about to poke up, just, just in time for me to get to the top. So, let's keep going. This section is meant to be pretty tricky, but look what I'm, look what I'm looking at at the moment. I'm literally walking through a cloud. It's incredible. Looks like I made it to heaven at last. <sighs> Brutal climbs. Look at that, that's spectacular. <laughs> Can't wait to see what's over the top. Hopefully a pub feed or a beer or something. So just reached peak number three today. I really need water. I've only got about 800 mils left. About 12, 14 Ks, lots of climbing. And I don't think there's any water in between here and camp. Um, not the smoothest trail, so have to be very careful here not to roll a sprain an ankle. I never thought it would be this hard, to be honest. Found this little creek. It is enough for me to fill up my bottles and a little flowing water there. Oh, what a relief. My hardest day on the trail was probably day seven, hiking from Vallejo Gantner Hut through to South Selwyn. And it seemed like since I started it, every day it had only got harder. Um, and I started getting lost and, and running out of water. And uh, there was rain coming in on the following day and um, a thunderstorm and I really needed to get over this section that was the Viking and the Crosscut Saw. And I'd only heard bad things about it and how difficult it was. Massive amounts of rain and thunderstorms and things coming. Cause I can't be up on those ridges if it's, a th if it's thunderstorming. So I don't know, I've got a lot to think about. Heading up this morning to Crosscut Saw, which is that bridge over there. Down there overlooking the Viking and the Razor. Let's try to get to the Crosscut before sunrise. Finally! I decided to walk as far as I could that day. Um, which I'd set at around South Selwyn, which was 42 kilometres, which is the furthest I'd ever hiked at that point. And I just put my head down and, and hiked through it, and it was just hill after hill after hill, and climbing over logs and under logs. It was probably the hottest day of the walk as well. It was up close to 30 degrees, and I was struggling to eat, and my body was, was sort of telling me to slow down. Uh, my blisters were pretty bad, my joints were sore. It was really make, make or break day because if I, got, if I got stuck anywhere on the track, I thought it was gonna be there. So I started probably over there, there near Mount Howard, Crosscut Saw, Mount Buggery, Mount Speculation, coming around, you got Mount Despair just there. And lastly, coming over here, down to the Viking Saddle and all the way up. Now I'm gonna punch down this hill, go as far as, far as I can um, to Hotham tonight. So I remember getting past the Viking and and feeling on top of the world and then starting to come down. I was pretty fatigued and there were snakes about and... Hey, you bastard. I was heading into the dry barriers, which is one of the driest sections of the track. And I remember heading onto the next water tank, but not too much water because I passed a, a couple in the morning and they said that all the water tanks were full so I hiked on with a bit of water and and I was almost out by the time I got to this next water tank. Just made it here to the Barry Mountains tank and it's empty. Oh man. It's about 6.30 so I've only got about an hour of daylight. The next tank's in 8Ks of hills. I'm gonna have to go on. We've got like a litre. That was a pretty low moment. I was stressing and not sure if that was gonna be the end. I remember I started blowing my whistle on my pack just to sort of see if anyone was around in the area that might have had water and obviously no one came or anything, but I knew going into this walk that if there was anything that was gonna stop me from getting to the end, it was either an injury uh, bad weather or running out of water, and I was running out of water. So it was pretty disheartening and 
you start to think, you know, all the preparation and everything that's gone into it, and you've done something as silly as not carrying enough water from one place to the next. And so everything's running through your head, and you're wondering how long until you have to hit that button. So I was walking down the track, like getting seriously worried that um, I wouldn't make it to South Selwyn with 500 mils of water left. And then I came across this on the way, not on my maps, not anywhere, but it must be a new one. And it has water in it and I, I was like seriously worrying, you know, that could have ended the whole trip. I just can't believe I let it happen again. <sighs> Stupid. Two hours ago, my feet were absolutely on fire. Eight, 10 k's later, I've just sort of forgotten about them. My joints, I've forgotten about how they're aching. I've just sort of gone numb. Told my body to shut up and I've decided that I'm just gonna walk as far as I physically can today. Um, and just sort of see what's possible because I didn't think I'd be here. Um, let's see how far I get. I just remember a quote from Heather Anderson and one of the books that inspired me to start the track. And it was pain and hardship are integral to any through hike, as they are to life in general. It is suffering that is a mindset. You know, I really believe that and it's something that's, that's stuck with me. Even in the day to day since I've come back that you know, sometimes things suck and, and it's hard and it hurts and whatnot, but, but it's, it's, it's all comes down to a mindset and, and if you have your head in the right place, then you can surpass most of those challenges. Oh, no. Jesus. So, so, uh... Oh, fuck. So I'm just in camp here and Literally the second I put my pack on the ground, my, my eyes just shut. Let's see how we wake up tomorrow, but I should be hot on tomorrow. Looks like the storm's arrived. 45, 45 mil of rain, supposedly. I've got to keep going to hot them, so let's push on. I just heard the loudest thunder that I've ever heard. I'm absolutely freezing. My legs are locking up a little bit. My hands are just all pruned. Thank God, I'm only a few k's from St. Bernard, so I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, the thought to bail out early, obviously I contemplated it. But there was never a time when I thought in this moment, I would rather be at home than where I am. Pretty much every day after Hotham, um, even though I was still pushing my body to, to 30, 35, 40, 45 K days, it became so much easier because um, of the mindset of, you know, Heather Anderson's quote that, that stayed with me. Yeah, the physical challenge I, I got used to. And then it was pretty much Every, every day I was, I was enjoying all the little things um, of being back on trail. And even after my rest day in Hotham, when I had a full day just to relax and, and do nothing, my body was, was asking me, you know, why are you sitting down? Is it Divins? Yep. Very nice. Will's hut at Mount Will's. I mean, there's a few particles and things. I was up in the Alpine. View on the flats. Here we are set up at uh, Cleve Coal. On my way to Sunnyside and the Omeo yep. Highway. Here we go. No, he's gone. Stay on. Stay on. We don't make a graveyard. So yeah, let's just hope I don't get hit by one. I'm so lucky to be walking this track when I am. Coming down here, that looks like the snowies over there. South Wales Victorian border. Decent size. Just coming down Cascade Trail. I'm in Threadbow in an hour and a half with any luck. I'm 
my way to the rolling grounds. Hopefully, make it to Valentine's Day tonight. It'll be lovely. Uh, just coming down from Jagungle Saddle to O'Keefe. Finally heading down to Kyandra and it looks like over there is Pop, Chris and Dean so excited for that. Nan and Pop's got me a uh, <laughs> some nice lunch which I've been thinking about for the last couple of days. When I planned the initial itinerary for the trip I had an idea to, to hike 24 hours um, continuously as sort of a challenge, as a, as a fun a fun little thing to, to spice up the journey. Initially I had 76 kilometres, um, that's sort of what I guessed that I could do in 24 hours. This was around the same time my pop was undertaking the March On Challenge, which is a fundraiser to hike 96 kilometres throughout the month of March uh, to help raise money for a charity called Soldier On. The significance of, of 96 kilometres being um, that's the length of the Kokoda Track. In, in Threadburn Hotham, I saw that you know he'd been walking when I'd been walking, and I thought you know 96 96Ks that's that's pretty close to to where I've got my challenge set. So why don't I um, join on with him and and do it with him? Uh, only mine would be in 24 hours. So I contacted uh, Paul Cuthbert and, and Tom Bartlett, who set, have the record for the fastest known time on the Australian Alps walking track. They hiked it in in something ridiculous like 11 days and. And so I had a phone call with Tom and, and he was super helpful. He, he really encouraged me and, and um, after our phone call, I sort of walked away knowing that, you know, he doesn't think I'm crazy and <laughs> I'd get through it. And it was for a good cause, so I was more than happy to, to give it a go. Just saying goodbye to Dean, uh, Pop and Chris at Kyandra here. Onwards to uh, Wits Hut for the night. Big day tomorrow. Last camp for the for the whole trip. Let's have a look. Very nice. Uh, that the 24-hour challenge at the end and the 96 kilometres actually wasn't the the hardest part of the of the trip. The day on the biking was was definitely a lot more challenging. It was early on and and I was so uncertain. And with this 96 kilometres, I was you know just as much uncertain of how I'd go, but but I knew for a fact that I'd finish. Um, I'd be at the end, I'd be at home, uh, yeah, I'd be with mum and dad, and, and I'll have finished the whole track. Alrighty, so it's exactly seven o'clock. Oh, 7.01. Let's go. Two hour check in, 10K, so 86 to go. About 11 a.m., we're just past the four hour mark. 20K is on schedule, two o'clock. 31 kilometers, five o'clock mark. I've never done more than 45 k's before, so everything onwards from here is PB. 7 p.m., 12 hours of walking. Check that out. I've never seen so many fish rising at once. Uh, 11 o'clock, 16 hours of hiking, just short of 70 k. My feet are starting to hurt. I do feel blisters, but it's nothing I can't manage. One o'clock, 18 hours of hiking, pretty solid. We're up to 77 k's, um, and then I'll be meeting Tom very soon. So that's awesome. And yeah, less than 20 k's to go. Can't believe it. Don't know how I'm still walking, but everything's good. Feeling great, so let's push on. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm so good to see you! Yeah. <laughs> I missed you. Oh, there you go! There's yeah, another I know. Mark. That's gotta be it. <laughs> when I arrived at the Namaji Visitor Centre and I, and I walked up those stairs, 
Um, I was in slightly a delirious state and uh, looking back on it now, uh, there's, there's not much I can remember. I was, I was quite tired. It was a little bit hard to wrap my head around how it had become my, my lifestyle and, and my purpose to wake up and walk. 24 hours, 96. Not to, well not to mention 700 Ks. No, not to mention 700 Ks. Wow. Oh, I'm knackered, but I'm so happy. It's done. I'm done. Wow. Yeah. That's like a bit bittersweet, to, isn't it? It's just hard to wrap my head around. Like, even the whole, the last day, it just hasn't felt like it. it's going to be the end. I think it'll take a couple of days to sink in. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. You smell like a clean person. And when I was walking those last, last few kilometres with Tom, I was asking him about his experience um, finishing the track and, and setting the FKT. And he was telling me how um, the end is such a small, such a small part of, the, of your, your experience on the track. And when I got to the end, I, I definitely realised that it's hard to, to comprehend because over the last 23 days I'd been thinking about this this grand finish and how amazing it would feel and you know when I got there on on that morning it was good to see mum and dad but it was just it was just the end and it was nothing in comparison to to the entire walk there are a few things that might have changed about the way I the way I view things and uh, doing things on your own it really made me grateful for what I did have just the, the smallest things like having water running out of a tap and food in the fridge and, and being able to, to change the temperature at a, at a flick of a switch. And it's those things that I realised that I'd you know, forgotten about and taken for granted. And that's one thing that definitely changed. Well, by definition, a hiker is somebody who walks long distances, especially across country, but what do you consider a long distance? Whether you hike 5Ks or 700Ks, whether you hike solo or in company, whether you day hike, overnight hike or through hike, whether you have all the gear or only the clothes on your back, or whether you hike fast or slow, a hiker is somebody who finds value in outdoor exploration on foot. Wherever you go and however you go about it, make it your own.